All right, so we got Star Trek Lower Decks is back, which uh, if you've seen my previous season reviews for this show, I was not a huge fan of it, but I do want to still talk about Star Trek week to week, and since Star Trek Prodigy has not come back, and I don't really like talking about the live action shows week to week for the most part, um, I thought I'd just talk about this show week to week because it's an easy show to talk about. And I kind of enjoyed this episode. It kind of gives me hope for season three. Because it feels like this time they're starting to have consequences for our characters. And the Rick, and Rick and Morty S comedy is kind of toned down a little bit in this episode, which is enjoyable. Because while it's clear that the people who made this show are definitely fans of Star Trek and they, they have a lot of in jokes that are funny, and you know, if you know Star Trek, they're, it's, it's good to watch. There is a level of like, okay, but you guys still are missing the point of Star Trek. And I think this episode does a great job of kind of feeling like a Star Trek thing while having some more raunchy-esque humor. And I think this is an example of what the show could be when all of its feet are pushed forward. So in this first episode of Season 3, we have um, our main girl trying to unframe her mother, who... Uh, has is now under Starfleet investigation after a bombing, and they're trying to get onto the spaceship and steal it. So this kind of is basically reminiscent of the plot of Star Trek uh, IV, uh, The Voyage Home, which is basically, you know, the our main crew are put in trial for something that happened in the last movie, and they uh, go and steal a spaceship. But instead of going back in time, so they don't really do. Which obviously I think the creators of this episode knew that this is what they're referencing. Because they even mentioned the fact of being in modern civilization as jokes with their main uh, character. Whatever the green girl's name and the guy with the glass thing, uh, the eye thing, whatever. I'm bad at memorizing Star Trek names. I'm a huge fan, but I, I like I can I can name you Captain Kirk, Spock, you know, uh, Wolf, Data, Picard, and like some of the main obvious characters. But a lot of the ones like even though I recognize these characters, I'm fans of all these characters. I just I have the worst time memorizing all their names. Uh, but you know, that's a thing. But yeah, so the humor here was kind of fun. I really liked when they stole this like theme park ride. That launched them into space, <laughs> and they and this one guy ended up on the ride, and he and he went with them, and they just left him there. And then at the end of the episode, you see him getting arrested and going insane. That was funny as hell, because I I thought I thought where they're going with that was somewhere completely different, because he said it was why they're leaving him. This is the last you've seen of me, and I thought oh, okay he's gonna come back like later in this season, like maybe the weird random episode but no he, he just gets arrested at the end of the episode and that, that was really funny i really enjoyed this episode and this is what i like it's a very star trek centric story be, of you know uh them trying to help these alien species and um it, it, it mixed in there and also just kind of poking fun at star trek a little bit but also them doing something that is kind of a little bit different. I, the only thing I could see why some Star Trek fans might be annoyed at this episode is them in the original Star Trek 4, right, that I'm referencing in this video, um, when they stole that spaceship, it wasn't to go against Starfleet. In this episode, they're very much working against Starfleet. And, and so it makes it less of a heroic thing. And in fact, uh, uh, but... The nice thing about that is at the end of this episode, our main characters uh, get consequences for that, right? So it's not just them, you know, portraying that as a good thing. Because Starfleet, you know, they're always represented as good in the universe. And that's kind of how this works, right? So you, you go against them, there's consequences. And our main girl, while she's been irresponsible and a mess throughout the three seasons of the show, now she has someone watching over her. And if she fails, she's out of the Starfleet for good. And so that's kind of where we're going. And I like that because 
it's going to cause our characters to mature because obviously I think where they're going with this is the main girl of the show is going to be captain at the end of this series like her mother and I think something's going to happen with her she's going to die or something and I, I, I'm interested to see where that happens you know and I do like that this show is is kind of going in a less episodic direction and more of a story focused direction is what it looks like with this season. Not completely. It might be, it's probably going to be like Rick and Morty stories, right? Rick and Morty plot f has a plot and plot lines that go places and stuff like that. But for the most part, they are just goofy week to week episodes. But this is still a fun show. And I enjoyed this episode. It actually made me excited for season three. When I turned this on, I was like, I'll watch it because I watch all of Star Trek and I want to review it and all that stuff. But I wasn't, like, excited. But after this episode, I surprisingly enjoyed myself. And I was like, you know what? I'm excited to watch some more of this show.